Netflix drops its first NASCAR trailer, Kyle Larson makes a shocking return, and Kyle Busch shuts down Rowdy Energy under suspicious circumstances. How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric. Welcome to a jam-packed midweek episode of Out of the Groove. NASCAR is coming to Netflix. Today, the streaming giant dropped the first trailer for NASCAR Full Speed, premiering January 30th. Five episodes, approximately 45 minutes each, featured drivers include Denny Hamlin, Ross Chastain, Ryan Blaney, William Byron, Tyler Reddick, Bubba Wallace, Kyle Larson, Christopher Bell, and Joey Logano. Click the top link down in the description to see the full trailer. I'm just showing some clips of it here. Initial reaction, uh, this is a great trailer. Uh, it's intense, fast paced, a lot of quick cuts, soaring cameras really captures the sensation of speed. And perhaps more importantly, this trailer does what some of NASCAR's media partners have failed to do recently. This trailer takes stock car racing very seriously. Netflix is really playing up the danger of racing. There's a line, you have the opportunity to get hurt or even killed. These are men going off to battle. That's the image Netflix seems to be you know, trying to portray. There's clearly gonna be a focus as well on drivers' home lives. You see shots of you know drivers' families. Tyler Reddick's wife, Alexa, has a line. You see drivers' kids in some of the shots. The on-track battle will likely be the focus, but Netflix is likely going to try and humanize the drivers inside those machines. I think that's a good approach. And, you know, I listed out those drivers, Blaney, Hamlin, Byron, Larson, etc. There were a few names surprisingly absent from that list, like Kyle Busch. He was in the playoffs, won three races last year, a bit surprised he wasn't mentioned. And Chase Elliott. I know he wasn't in the driver's playoffs last year, but he's the sport's most popular driver. I figured they'd find a way to, to shoehorn him in. That could be a missed opportunity, but at the same time, I would argue that Chase Elliott and Kyle Busch right now, outside of Bubba Wallace, are the two most recognizable names in NASCAR that are still actively racing. And I'm not counting Dale Earnhardt Jr. or Kevin Harvick, who just retired. This show will give Ryan Blaney time to shine. Ross Chastain who has real superstar potential. Guys in their prime, like Joey Logano, Kyle Larson, even Denny Hamlin at the back end of his career. Big personality, I think that's gonna come through on camera. I'm excited, this is just a trailer, of course, but I think it captured the tone I was looking for. And I think the time slot, premiering January 30th, just a few days before the clash, before the season begins, I think is a great time slot or release date, I should say. And five episodes, I think that's a good amount. You're not gonna scare away any you know, semi-interested casual fan with only five episodes. Yeah, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes you know, people rave about a show, like, like The Walking Dead. For years, that was the hottest thing on television. I've never seen an episode. And if I were to start watching now, it's daunting. There's like 10, 11, 12 seasons, something like that. Five episodes, it's enough to take a pretty deep dive, but it's not too much that it'll scare away any you know, semi-interested casual fans out there. A reminder that this docu-series is produced by many at NASCAR, Ben Kennedy, Tim Clark, folks from NASCAR Studios, Dale Earnhardt Jr. is listed as an executive producer, as well as some of the same folks who worked on uh, The Last Dance, the ESPN Michael Jordan documentary that was very well received a couple years ago. So I'm very optimistic. First trailer looks good. Again, captured the right tone, exactly what I'm looking for. Looking forward to checking out the premiere January 30th, only on Netflix. Great opportunity for NASCAR to get in front of a large, large audience. So uh, that's exciting, but let's move on. Before we get to some real on-track racing news, I think this story is worth mentioning, but after roughly four years, Rowdy Energy is shutting down. First reported by BevNet, the energy drink company co-founded by NASCAR star Kyle Busch will be shutting down by the end of this month. Then today, Kyle Busch himself put out a statement. Unfortunately, I'm here to say that Rowdy Energy will be ceasing operations and closing its doors in the coming weeks. Like many other new consumer brands, the headwinds have proven to be too strong and it makes the most sense to end the journey so I can remain focused on my family and my racing career. Disappointing news, but I'd noticed over the past year or so that Rowdy Energy was absent from store shelves. Like uh, HEB, major grocery store chain in Texas, a couple of years ago, I walked through the front door and the first thing I saw was a massive Rowdy Energy display. I was blown away. Over time, I stopped seeing Rowdy Energy on shelves there. I went to a Texas Rangers game uh, a couple of years ago and they had Rowdy Energy logos all over the place. They were selling them at concession stands. Rowdy Energy was the official energy drink of the Texas Rangers. I don't think that deal continued continued into 2023 or obviously 2024. So I guess the writing has been on the wall for a bit. 
Now, one interesting wrinkle to this story, a few folks were sharing this screenshot around, so I went and looked into it for myself, but apparently, and I'm not 100% sure this is what led to Rowdy Energy closing down. Perhaps this shutdown's been in the works for months. This may have nothing to do with it, but apparently the state of California alleged that a unacceptable amount of mercury and lead have been found in Rowdy Energy products. Ugh, well... Fingers crossed I develop some sort of mutant superhero powers. <laughs> so uh, I don't know the exact situation there, but it's interesting. Uh, rowdy energy is no more, it appears. The end of an era, a short era, but an era nonetheless. Now, let's talk about some actual racing. Today, Sam Hunt Racing confirmed Corey Heim is back. He will make select starts in 2024. Heim's first Xfinity Series race will be at Las Vegas in March. Heim made four Xfinity Series starts with Sam Hunt last year, had a couple of mechanical failures, but at Darlington, he finished 10th in the spring, 15th in the fall. Not too bad. Glad to see Heim getting some additional seat time this year. He's back in trucks in 2024, looking to back up a very impressive 2023. First full-time year in trucks last season, and he finished the year with three wins and 19 top 10s in only 22 starts. That's incredible. He was in position to win the series championship as well before he got spun by Carson Hosevar, and we all know the story. All hell broke loose. I'm a big Corey Heim fan, though. I am a true believer that it is, in fact, Heim time. Very consistent in trucks last season. If I was a Cup Series scout, I would have Corey Heim very high on my draft board. He may have to fight through Chandler Smith, Sheldon Creed to get to the top of the Toyota totem pole, but given some time, I think Corey Heim is capable of great things. Let me know what you expect from Corey Heim, year two of full-time truck series racing with a few Xfinity starts sprinkled in once again. These last two stories aren't directly related to NASCAR, but they are NASCAR adjacent. Kyle Larson yesterday made the shocking announcement that he will race in this week's Chili Bowl Nationals. This was first reported by Flow Racing, but apparently... Early yesterday, early Tuesday morning, Kyle Larson called Keith Kuntz and asked him if he had any extra cars available for this weekend. You know, what are you going to do? Tell Kyle Larson no? One thing led to another, and Kyle Larson is now scheduled to race tomorrow night, Thursday night. And I believe if he finishes first or second, he will lock himself into Saturday's Chili Bowl A Main, seeking his third Chili Bowl Nationals title. There are a ton of layers to this story, and I'm just scratching the surface, but Larson is currently scheduled to race a dirt late model at the Wild West Shootout in New Mexico on Saturday. Apparently, if tomorrow night he locks into the A main, Larson will race in New Mexico and then fly to Tulsa, Oklahoma to compete in the Chili Bowl. We all know how important the Chili Bowl is to Kyle Larson. A few years ago, he said the Chili Bowl was the one race he wanted to win more than any other. He got his wish. He made it happen in 2021. He backed it up with another win in 2022. But Larson sat out the 2023 Chili Bowl, in part at least to protest the event's notoriously low payout. A major event with hundreds of entries, a TV and streaming deal, paid only $10,000 to win. This year, that number has been doubled to 20000 I don't think money is the reason Kyle Larson changed his mind and is deciding to race this week. I think he just loves dirt racing. At his core, he loves this event more than anything. He's honestly a bit insane, I think. I, I was watching uh, yesterday, I was watching the Kenny Wallace interview Larson just did. And at the beginning of the interview, he's talking about how, yeah, I've enjoyed my time this off season, been out in Arizona, kind of away from racing, out of the racing bubble. It's been nice to relax, decompress. He says all that and then does this. Two major races, apparently, in one day in two different states. Kyle, what happened to the off-season? Guess there is no off-season for Kyle Larson. It's what makes him so just fun to watch. Whether you're a fan or not, you at least have to respect what he's what he's done and what he continues to do. We'll be curious to see how he performs tomorrow night. Good luck to Kyle Larson. Other NASCAR notables in the Chili Bowl include uh, Jesse Love, Chase Briscoe. So plenty of NASCAR connections in this year's race. You can watch all of the Chili Bowl action uh, with a subscription to Flow Racing. I consider myself a very casual dirt racing fan, but the Chili Bowl is always a fun one to keep up with. So uh, just an added wrinkle to this year's event. Kyle Larson at the 11th hour signs his name onto the entry list. Watch out. One final story that kind of follows up something we discussed earlier in the week. IROC, the International Race of Champions, is making a return. Ray Everham, Rob Kaufman acquired the rights to the IROC name and brand and are planning on hosting IROC events in 2024 using historical IROC 
cars. The announcement on Monday was pretty thin when it comes to details, but Ray Everham was on Racing America's The Bullring earlier this week and shed a little more light on his plans. Well, right now we're looking at the uh, historical part of, of the IROC series, you know, get the cars back out, find out where they're at, see if they're track worthy and work towards uh, getting some kind of, of, uh, of on-track competition going uh, with, with these vintage cars or cars that are built like the vintage cars. Right now, we're in the early stages of planning, but the response has been incredible. Everham also says that the goal is to bring as many existing IROC cars together. It doesn't necessarily sound like he wants to race these old cars right out the gate, but he does want to put on some sort of on-track exhibition this year if possible. Listening to these comments, it sounds to me like this IROC reboot is still in the very early stages. He talks about putting on a competition, but he also seems to focus a lot on just highlighting, preserving, showcasing IROC's great history. He mentions vintage cars, but he also mentions building new cars that are like the old cars. So it seems to me like they're still not exactly sure what direction this new form IROC is going to take. Will it look kind of like the SRX where they built all new cars and brought in, you know, active drivers to truly compete on national TV? Or will this look more like a museum on wheels where they're traveling maybe to shadow other race weekends, put on exhibition events, highlight the history outside of the track with, you know, exhibits. What exactly will this new form IROC look like? I'm not sure even Ray Everham knows exactly at this point. I think he's still in the process of surveying what's possible, what's available to him, and he and Rob Kaufman will go from there. Uh, either way, I feel confident in saying IROC and the IROC brand is in good hands. We know Ray Everham has a tremendous amount of respect for racing history, but more specifically, IROC history. It's where he honestly got one of his first starts in, in motorsports. So it'll be an interesting story to kind of follow throughout the next year or so, see how things develop, but uh, I'm optimistic. It, it would be awesome to see IROC back in some form or fashion, maybe restored to its former glory. Who knows? Like I said earlier this week, IROC was largely before my time. It ended in 2006. I didn't start watching racing at all until like 2005, so I kind of missed out on it. I've had to go back and watch a lot of clips and replays to fully grasp it, but I I'd love to see it back in the modern day. It's part of the reason I've gotten so attached to the SRX. I've been to a couple SRX events the past few years because it is in many ways the closest thing we have to a modern day IROC. Not exactly the same by any stretch, but it has its own charm as well. I'd like to see what IROC can do with Ray Everham, Rob Kaufman, all them behind the wheel, uh, so to speak. But let me know, what uh, expectations do you have for the IROC brand going forward? And which would you like to see? Would you like to see an actual competitive racing series, perhaps with new IROC style cars? Or is showcasing the great history of IROC uh, more than enough for your liking? Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. That is going to do it for this episode, y'all. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new to the channel, it's free. And it allows you to see all my latest videos uh, sooner than most anyone else. And a huge thank you as always to my Patreon supporters. It's been a busy news week. You can tell things are picking back up. The NASCAR season is right around the corner. Thanks for watching, folks. I'll catch you in the next episode.